While you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. All right, shalom, most high Christ bless. I'm Officer Asa at IUIC Chicago, and I'm here with... This is Officer Yokola. To the right, Officer Hosea. Officer Judah. All right, now today's class is entitled Prelude to Adultery, Part 3, The Single Man and Single Woman. So if y'all been paying attention, right? So the first class was what? Evading adulterous hoes. Adultery part one, the married man. Then it was give the whole month no entry. Adultery part two, the married woman. So we can't leave our single brothers and sisters out. We can't leave them out. They need help as well to deal in the midst of all this evil. All right? So we're going to start off with a video. Because visuals are good, and we need things, we need imagery sometimes to strike fear in us. We need a healthy fear of God. So again, my single brothers, my single sisters, pay attention. Play. Now, hold on, hold on, before you play. So I want to set the stage. This sister, this is a real live video. This is not a reenactment. This is a sister who is from Zion, Illinois, north uh, suburbs. This is her giving an account of her catching HIV. Being young, free, partying, what some of you probably still want to do or you doing on the low. This can happen to you. Press play. Responsibilities like that. So, you know, I was living. So it sounds to me like you were living the life, 21 years old in Atlanta, no kids, money, nice weather, friends, and you're kind of just having fun. What changed? One night I went to a club with one of my good friends and that I had met while I was down there. She was actually from Chicago, but she was attending Clark Atlanta. And I dropped her off after the club and at her boyfriend's house. And I was sitting at a light and this car pulls up next to me. Um, this guy is like telling me to roll my window down in the car. And I'm like, I'm looking and I'm like, I am not about to roll my window down. It's three o'clock in the morning, you know? And I'm like, what is he doing out at three in the morning? And then I'm like, well, he's probably doing the same thing that I was doing, you know, leaving the club. And every time I turned and looked, he was going like this to roll my window down. And I was like, the light was red. And it was just like one of those things where like, the light never turned green and I just rolled my window down and he asked me, you know, for my name and he was trying to hurry up and get my phone number because at this point, I mean, the light was probably green. Honestly, I don't even remember. Um, but there, I know there was nobody behind us because somebody would have been honking at us, but he asked um, for my number and I was like really hesitant to give it to him, but I had only been in Georgia like six months. So I really didn't know anybody. So then when I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to give it to him. Well, I thought about giving him the wrong number. And then I was like, well, I'm just going to give it to him. I mean, he was cute, you know? So I gave him. Okay. So that's the first timestamp for this video. So y'all see what happened with the sister. First and foremost, sisters, y'all should not be that gullible. This one encounter caused life-changing effects for this sister. That one moment. Go ahead, you just want to say something? That one moment. So y'all cannot be simple out here. Let's go to the next timestamp. And y'all probably, sisters probably watching like, I would never do that. Yeah, right. You single, you having your little thoughts, oh, I'm lonely. She said the same thing. I'm lonely. And that'd be your excuse to let your guard down and then you get caught up with one of these predators out here, hunters out here. Next time, Stamp. The, the surgery was going to cause me to have to like go under. So I wasn't going to be able to operate a vehicle when I woke up. 
So I had my godparents with me. And so when he sat me down and said, So pause it real quick. This is a long video. So I narrowed it down to these two timestamps. So what she's going over, she had to get a surgery because the same dude she gave her number to at the light, she found out he had a bunch of holes. So she caught up with him. The other woman ran up on her and they started duking it out. She ended up getting scratched. I think she say her lip notes or something swelled up. So in the midst of her getting this checkup for the scratches and stuff, what does she find out? Let's press play. What does she find out? Press play. On my test, I asked my godparents to leave the room so that he could tell me what those positives were. So when my godparents left the room, he told me that my test had come back positive for HIV. And I just sat there. And he just looked like he was like, I mean, maybe like he's done it a million times, but every time is like the first time. That's how he looked. Hold on, he hold on. Like y'all got to really wrap y'all head around this. Single brothers, single sisters. Y'all playing with wildfire outside these doors if you entertaining attention that ain't right for you. You entertaining these men that you don't really know like that. You brothers entertaining these women that you don't really know like that. I know they talk about COVID, but HIV and AIDS is still on the rise. Our people still contract that disease. So you go out here and play, being gullible, especially y'all that ain't never been outside. She was, you know, the college girl. She didn't know anybody and got reeled in by this dude. Let's play. To have to tell me. I mean, I was 22. So it was just like heartbreaking. And even after he told me, I really didn't know what it was. I really didn't know what that meant for me, how my life was going to change. And I was embarrassed. I was extremely embarrassed because I was so young and I knew it was going to be hard for me to live. I'm going to cry. <laughs> I knew it was going to be hard for me to still maintain like the lifestyle that I had now that I had HIV. So that might be frightening to some of y'all. It should be. It needs to be because that can be you. That one time you entertain that guy who's in the world, that could be you catch HIV just like that. But why do these things happen? Give me Hosea five and four. Why do these things happen? Why are we high in STDs? Why did this happen to our sister? I come out to be Hosea 5 and 4. The book of Hosea, chapter 5, verse 4. Mike, 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 no sound. It will not frame their doing. His mic is bad. Let's swap that mic out. His mic is bad. The book of Hosea, chapter 5. Verse four, mm -hmm. they will not frame their doings to turn unto their God mm -hmm. for the spirit of whoredom is in the midst of them and they have not known the Lord. Read it again from the top. They will not frame their doings to turn unto their God for the spirit. So hold on. It said they will not frame their doings to turn to the Lord, their God. Us as a people, we don't want to frame our mind to what God says. We want to frame our mind to turning up. We want to frame our mind to wild parties. We want to frame our mind to what? Sex with anybody we meet. This is what will happen to you. So you single brothers and sisters, I encourage y'all, gird up your loins. Stay in the spirit. Fast. Pray. Don't run out here and just jump on somebody or this can be you. That's why we showing you this to strike some fear in you. This is not a game. Remember, the servant that knew his Lord's will will be beaten with few stripes. You know what you're supposed to do. Our people out there, they don't know what they're supposed to do. So God going to deal with you way more severe from there. Give me, now read, finish up Hosea 5 and 4. Finish that up because you read uh, the top part. Keep reading. For the spirit of whoredom. The spirit of what? Whoredoms. The spirit of what? Whoredoms. The spirit of whoredoms made her stop that car. 
Because I've watched this video before. The spirit of whoredoms made her stop that car. Because when you watch the video in its entirety, she up there talking about some, oh, he was good looking. He was nice to me. He took me shopping. He showed me the city. Sisters, don't be that gullible. This can be you. This remind me of the movie, um, what is it? Ah, uh, man. The Tyler Perry movie. This like the real damn thing. Temptation. That rem- this is like a real version of Temptation. She got winded and down by her brother. She didn't even know like that. Why? Read that again. Why? For the spirit of whoredoms. The spirit of what? Whoredom. The spirit of whoredoms was in the midst. Whoredom. The spirit of whoredom. Excuse me. The spirit of whoredom was in the midst. And it caused her what? To contract HIV. You see, she crying. That, that's not going away. She going to have that forever. Read on. For the spirit of whoredoms is in the midst of them. Uh-huh. And they have not known the Lord. And they don't know the Lord. All you know is turn up. When we, we taught in Iowa not too long ago, it was some 14-year-old girls. I asked them, did they listen to Sexy Red? Did they listen to Pound Town? And they said, yeah, giggling. Wicked songs about whoredoms. And that's going to lead to them being what? The next sister like that. A life of pain and destruction. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 58. Is that in the Bible? Would God really give you disease? Yes. That's what we're showing you. Single brother, single sister, stay in the spirit. It's not worth it. You have to tame that spirit now, especially you talking about marriage. Because that's what we're going to get up to. You got to fix that spirit now. You got that spirit of whoredoms. How you going to be a husband or a wife? Give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 58. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 58. If thou wilt not hearken, I mean, if thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. So it said, if thou will not observe to do all the words, we got to do all the words in this book. And that includes when the scripture talk about whoredom, being a whore, there shall be no whore of the daughter of Israel. Sisters, you can't be out here being a whore on the low. Brothers, you can't be out here being a whoremonger on the low. And you know what the Bible say, you will be judged behind that. Read it again. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law. If you don't observe to do everything God says in this book, read. That are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. You know how our people be afraid when they get pulled over? They be shaking, shivering. You supposed to be like that when you not doing what the Bible says. But we don't have that same fear for God. That's why people do what they do out here. Jump down to verse 61. Verse 61. Also, every sickness. Every what? Every sickness. Because we're talking about sickness. Our sister was plagued with a sickness because of a life of whoredom. Read. And every plague. And every plague. That's sickness. Plagues, pestilence. That's all sickness. God said, because you do not observe to do all these words in his book, he's going to plague you with sickness. Read. Which is not. Read it again from the top. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law. Because you may say, okay, well, when I read Deuteronomy, it talk about emrods, the the botch, the itch, the scab. Guess what? He said he's going to plague us if we don't listen with things that's not written in here. HIV is not written in here. Gonorrhea is not written in here. Syphilis is not written in here. But if you don't observe to do these words in this book, brothers and sisters, you will be plagued with these diseases. Let's go to this next video really quick. Also, go ahead. And and you know what's, what's so dangerous about that is Everybody is typically really scared to catch any kind of HIV or uh, or STD, right? Sexual transmitted disease. Supposed to be. But what's going on today, especially with media and hip-hop, 
they're, they're, they're using spirits like Sexy Red or Glorilla, and they're, they're modernizing or making it cool or desensitizing you actually contracting these disease. Like Sexy Red, she said she caught chlamydia twice. Like it was nothing. She, oh, but I ain't got it no more, though. I'm good. I'm, I'm getting rid of it. And all of our young kids, our 13, 14, 15, 16-year-old kids that's getting real active because there's so-called a cure and stuff to get it and right. can flush it out your system in two to three days. Ah, oh, no, no problem. It's good. As long as I wear a condom, I should be good. Right? But you got spirits out here that's normalizing and they're not fearful because they think they got these different devices out here that can take that can get rid of it from them. They're not even fearful. So they won't even tell you that they have something because they don't even care. It's probably their fifth time having it. Oh, even when you get it, don't worry about it. You good. Just go to the doctor. They forgot the video from when we was dealing with the uh the Mary man. The sister at the end was naming everybody she infected. Right, right. On purpose. Right, on, on purpose. purpose. All praises. So we got another video. This sister here has infected many men. Why is we showing these things? You need to fear the Lord in you. Let's make sure we play that at that time. Stem 1552 to 1743. This woman reveals she if she's infected multiple men with HIV. Play. Eh? Not just in front only. Or like not only your bo- plus also. Yeah. Was it optional? Um, uh, not optional. The clients were liquor and a demand. Mm-mm. No, to keep a channel now, eh? Well, see, of course, to turn and umbele. And then with time, once they come and be, eh, not a cat, I knew, ma, now maybe you and young Gazia Pesa, what do I do? See, mini Pesa and your attacker. So, it must have been painful. You, you can uh, imagine, um, and a quacho, eleven months. So, hold on. Oh, so, the sister is speaking, and she's going in and out of English. and another dialect, another African language. But what she's saying is, from watching the video, right, she fell on hard times. I don't know why this is even a thought. And she started prostituting herself. That's what she going into. And the sister who's interviewing her is asking her certain questions about what happened, what she was doing. And she goes in to talk about how her family disowned her, so on and so forth. Why is we showing this again, brothers? I don't care how pretty the sister look. You don't know what she got. Even if they come up in here, you don't you don't know them. You just want to jump on the sister as soon as she come up in here. You don't know nothing about her because you single. It's been too long. I'm burning this, that, and the third. And you don't know what nobody got. Play And I, I would sustain it because what do I do? That is what I knew would get me money at that time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Like how how often would you do it, and with how many people? No, not not as often. You to 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 say me come to me patana na wewe na ni mo na me to anzane na wewe. Maybe you can get here. So now she asking her. How often? You heard what she said. I did it because I knew it would give me money at that time. I don't care how low you go. You shouldn't be selling your body. You shouldn't get to that point where that's an option. That's like a brother saying, man, I'm finna go back to slanging. How you how you get to that point? You shouldn't get to that point. You should be able to lean on somebody. But again, let's not miss the point. She's infected multiple men. Play. Mtu mwingine si ati nilikuwa na multiple yeah na sahi kuna mtu yote unaongelesha about vitu zenye unafanya na watu huko nje wanajua vitu zenye unafanya na wanasema nini uh, no kuna negative kuna positive kuna wenye wanani congratulate wananiambia i'm a strong woman but kuna hao wenye wanakuja wananiambia na huwa watu let's jump up to 17 we are 17 yet let's jump up to 17 Jump up to 17. 
because this is another interview you could watch it on your own. It's extensive, just like the first one. Let's jump up to 17. And this is just warning visual aids. Why? We need that fear the Lord put in us. Sisters, you could be the next sister to contract something because you can't contain yourself. You just want it that bad. This could be you. Press play. A true sexual act. Mm -hmm. I did not know by then I should, I should wear a condom. Condom was nothing to me then, so I never knew what condom was. Luckily, I never got pregnant. Here. Wait, Paul, she said condoms was nothing to her. She didn't, she didn't know about wearing condoms. She just was getting down, getting out there. So you can't contain yourself and you want to go out there. You just got to have it. This can be you. I want y'all to understand that. Yeah, I understand. Hey, I don't think that because she's revealing what she's revealing that she's just came to a place where now she's repentant and she's changed. She's still in the world. She's still living how she's living. There's no change. Like, she looks in a worldly standard like somebody who might be safe. You might look at her and be like, she possibly couldn't have, she might not have it. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't think twice about it. You would look at it and be like, all right, you can go. But she's still out here. People like this is still walking around. She might repent one day. Lord's will, she do repent. But understand that people are repenting and they can come in here like that. So don't be so quick to jump on somebody because you're going through your emotions and feelings and not thinking. All right, go ahead. I also want to point out that the sister hair is red. Stay away from red-headed sisters. Just saying. Hey, 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 with that point, can I get a scripture real quick, officer? Go ahead, go ahead. With that point where Officer Yokanan and Officer Judah just brought out, get um, Sirach 26. Sirach 26, read verse 9. Because, you know, the scriptures give us, they give us a guide on how we could avoid situations like this. Sister got red hair. She got the eyelids, his tarantulas all on it. So that's those are key indicators to let you know that there's a spirit of whoredom on her. Read that real quick. The book of Ecclesiasticus or Sirach, chapter 9, I mean, chapter 26, verse 9. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids. Read it again. The whoredom. The whoredom. The whoredom of a woman. A woman who has no regard. She said condoms is nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? Her mindset is like, look, I don't give a damn. I got a prideful spirit. And guess what? I'm going to have sex with whoever I want because I got to get this back. I got to get this bag. And if I contract whatever, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to pour it out. You. Read it. Read it again from the top. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her hearty look. So if you want to avoid a whoredom, look, uh, a whoredom woman, just look how she move. Listen to what comes out of her mouth. Look at her eyes. Look at how she dresses. All of those things are key indicators so that you can avoid yourself from getting these calamities on you. Read. And eyelids. And eyelids. One more scripture, officer. Bring it out. Go to uh same book. Go to chapter 9. Read verse 13. Chapter, uh, chapter 10, verse 13. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 10, verse 13. Because what was coming out of her mouth was a whole lot of pride. A whole lot of pride. Look what the Most High God says about when a person or especially a whorish woman has pride on it. Read that. For the pride is the beginning of sin. Uh -huh. And he that hath it shall pour out abomination. Read it again. For pride is the beginning of sin. And he that hath it shall pour out abomination. Guess what those abominations that she has that is she is pouring out? STDs. Bring it out. That's the abomination that she is pouring out because she has that pride and she kept on having sex with this man, sex with that man, sex with that man with no condoms. Now she got that disease and she's like, here, here's a gift for you. Here's this UPS package for you. Read on. And therefore, the Lord brought upon them strange calamities. Brought on what? Strange calamities. Strange collapse. 
<laughs> Strange chlamydia. That's what the Most High is talking about. Read on. And overthrew them utterly. And overthrew them utterly. So to avoid all that, just get married. Read on. And keep the law. The right way. You going after your lust is the wrong way. And this is how you going to end up. From there, let's get Proverbs 23, verse 27. We could drop that. Proverbs 23 and verse 27. Again, that was an example. Let's go to Proverbs 23 and verse 27 real quick. The book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 7. Uh huh. 27, 27. 27. For a whore is a deep ditch. A whore is a what? A deep ditch. A whore is a deep ditch, single brothers. What's the, why did the Lord use a ditch? When you fall in a ditch, it's hard to get out of there. So you might say to yourself, well, man, I probably could go, you know what I'm saying, smash some and come back. No, you might be like dude off, off Harlem Nights. <laughs> he called the family. He said, I ain't never coming home no more. Richie. Crying. He was crying. The man was crying. Now, am I saying you're going to be like dude, the, the guy that was hung up with the prostitute on, on the movie? No, but you might get in a situation where you can't get out of. What's the situation you can't get out of? Disease. That's yours forever. Hey, can I pull out a precept to show them or to help guide the people before they get into that situation, before they say, help, I need to get out of this situation, before they get into their hole? Let me get Sirach. Bring it get out. Back to Sirach, chapter 9, and we're going to start at 5. This is wise counsel. This is wise wisdom from your forefathers. Your forefathers left the message here for us. Remember, everything written the four times was written for our learning. So you're going to learn that it's whores out here, no matter how cute you think they look, no matter how um, to this worldly standard they appear to be. Nah, they embody a certain spirit, and the Lord seen that spirit from the beginning, and our forefathers saw it, and they warning us. Because remember, in these last days, we don't have our mind. We don't have our consciousness. We don't have a good understanding, but a good understanding have all they to do these commandments. Let's read. The book of Ecclesiasticus or Sirach, chapter 9, verse 5. Uh-huh. Gaze not on a maid. First and foremost, the commandment is to control and tame your eyes. It says, gaze not, meaning do not look upon what? A maid. A who? A maid. A young woman. Or a woman of any age. Today, they come looking 80, they 80 years old, looking like the sister with the red hair. Trying to compete with the sister 20, 30, 40 years younger than her. Don't gaze upon them. Read. That thou fall not. That thy what? Fall not. That you fall not. That you, that you contract something that you can't get rid of. That you fall not into that deep ditch and you can't get out of. Read. By those things. By that those things that are what? Precious. The things that are precious in a woman is subjective to every man. Whatever you find precious in that woman, gaze not upon her for that. Read. That are precious in her. Read. Give not thy soul unto a harlot. That's a harlot. She embodied the spirit of a harlot. You can't tell a harlot from a, a good woman today. According to the world, a good woman can go out and dress like a harlot and she's supposed to be treated as a good woman is supposed to be treated. We can't tell a difference. The scripture said, give not thy what? Give not thy soul. Give not thy soul. Don't give her no time. Don't give her no attention. Don't give her no effort. She want to be a harlot. She want to dress like a harlot. She want to present herself as a harlot. Let her be out there with the rest of the harlots. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to raise our righteous sisters and righteous children of God here where we at, right? And they're not going to be harlots. We're going to give our attention and time and effort to them to raise them up. You understand? So they won't have to be in situations where they have to sell themselves to get money, contracting certain diseases that they can't get off of them. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to give our attention to, Read That thou lose not thine inheritance. You're going to die. Our inheritance is to live, to inherit this earth, to reign, to rule, right? To pass on these custom side children. If we getting involved with these deep ditches and getting the diseases that don't come off of us. Why? Because we simply gaze upon them and then we create a lust in us. We're not going to be able to have that inheritance of life. Read. Verse six. Give not thy soul unto harlots that thou lose not thy inheritance. Uh-huh. Look not round about thee in the streets. That's where they at. 
They not up in here. They out there. So this is good counsel for when you out there on your day to day. Don't be just all about looking like, oh, damn, she fine. Stop doing that. Don't do that. Tame your eyes. Be like your forefather, Job. Job said he made a covenant with his eyes. They there. We see them. We acknowledge. We know that they there. But we're not gazing upon them for the things that we might find precious in them so that we don't create lust within us. I don't want to take over your class. Go ahead. All hey, praise to the most high. I want to say something, too. In verse 5, where it says, Gaze not on a maid that thou fall not by those things that are precious in her. What's heavy about it, about that, is in order for you to gaze on a maid and fall for the things that are precious in her, she must be dressing a certain way for you to cause you to gaze at her. If a sister is fully clothed and she's being modest and she don't want you to look at her a certain way, she's going to clothe a certain way and it's, you're not going to be tempted to gaze at her a certain way. But if she clothes herself like a whore with a W, you're going to be tempted to gaze at her. And then that will cause you to fall for the things that are precious into her. And what we call that in the world, you get vagina whip. And when you vagina whip, you spend all your money on it. Now you lose your inheritance. Now you then went broke trying to spend all your money on this woman, trying to buy her drinks, get her clothes so you can continue getting the vagina. And then when you done, she going to be like, oh, you broke now? Mm. To the next, to the left. Oh, da, 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 da. Now you now you stuck like, oh, dang, I thought she was feeling me. You a munch. That's what they doing these days. Now you a munch. You done ran out. You done lost your inheritance for a hoe. Like that one basketball player. That man, I bet he done spent his four years earnings on, uh, what's her name? Ice Spice. A half a million dollars on a date. Congratulations. You played yourself. You played yourself, you goofy. He going to end up on goof ass. Hey, go back to Proverbs 23, and verse 27. We're going to read 27 and 28. But this is warning. Yeah, we, we making light of it. Um, a lot of this is probably going to be shocking to y'all. Y'all probably like, damn, as you as you watching this class. But this is serious business. Again, single brothers, single sisters, this is serious business. It's not worth, I can't remember the term. You making a, a temporary decision for uh, lifetime effects. Proverbs 23, 27. The book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 27. Uh-huh. For a whore is a deep ditch. Uh-huh. And a strange woman is a narrow pit. That's what these women is out here, you single brothers. That's what they are. Traps, snares. We're going to show you examples of that. Read on. She also lieth in wait as for a prey. She does what? Lieth in wait as for a prey. You single brothers. They are on the hunt. It ain't just a married man. That's what. That's why we had to touch the singles before we leave this topic. They not just gunning for married men, single men too. I remember we was marching, man conference. Sister like, oh man. All right, handsome man. Wait, whoa, hold on. They looking. They gunning for you too. And you don't have that head. You don't have that thing you can go release on yet. If you follow what I'm saying. So you ain't got nothing. You got these scriptures, which is what your head supposed to be in. This was going to keep you from falling in the ditch. Read it again. She also lieth and wait as for a prey. Uh-huh. And increaseth. The transgressors among men. These whores increase sin amongst men. That's what the officer was just giving examples on. Brothers spending all they last. The, the forefathers of Rubabel said, the truth in women is the strongest things on the face of this earth. Men will give up their life for a woman. For the box. Not the Xbox. Noah box. That box. From there. Go to uh, Deuteronomy 28, verse 35. And this is a warning. Single brothers, single sisters, contain yourself. It's not worth it. Deuteronomy 28, verse 35. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 35. Uh -huh. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees uh -huh. and in the legs uh -huh. with a sore botch uh -huh. that cannot be healed uh -huh. from the sole of thy foot Unto the top of thy head. This is talking about God smiting us with disease. Why? 
Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Let's not leave that wise God plaguing people with diseases as we sin. Read that. Some basic we all know. Read. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. You see that? So these things happen to us because we're not listening to God. God does not want his sons to be whoremongers. God does not want his daughters to be whores. So when you live that life, it is a punishment behind that. Next scripture. Go to Proverbs 21, verse 11. Somebody going to say in the comments some, some emotional. Why are you showing these people? You should be more compassionate. God allowed this to come out. Why? Why does God allow videos like this to be made? Let's see. Read that. Proverbs 21, verse 11. The book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 11. When the scorner is punished, the simple is made wise. Read that again. When the scorner is punished, the simple is made wise. It says when the scorner is punished, when you see somebody else get punished for something, when you see the judgment that come upon them, it make you wise. That's why the Lord will have Moses put people to death that broke the commandments. And then they would see that and they would do what? Put fear on all the people. So when you see people like these sisters catching diseases from their life of whoredom, it put fear on you. You're made wise. Okay, let me contain myself. I know it's been X amount of years. So what? It's not worth that. Read on. And when the wise is instructed, he receiveth knowledge. You being instructed right now, if you wise, you're going to receive this knowledge of God. The scriptures is giving you proper counsel so you don't destroy yourself. From there, give me Proverbs chapter 5. In verse 1. That's actually what we've been seeing, the videos that you've been posting. That's exactly what it is. It says, when the scorner is punished, the simple is made wise. We've just seen scorners punished. So you're supposed to be taking the examples of other people's mistakes, and it should make you wise. But if you watch that, and you still run into that, lake of, uh, run into that fire, you are, not, you are not wise at all. And you are a fool. Don't be that foolish person. This is a warning. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 1. The book of Proverbs chapter 5, verse 1. Read. My son, attend unto my wisdom and bow thine ear to my understanding. Listen to this wisdom coming out so you don't be the next story. You, that's what the whole Bible is. The Bible is mistakes and mishaps left from our forefathers and foremothers, and we supposed to read it, okay, that's all I need. All I need to do is read about it. I don't want to experience that. I don't want no parts of that. They did this wrong. Let me, know, let me not do that. They did this right. Let me do that. But us, as a people, we hard-headed. I want to see. I want to touch the fire. I want to see how hot it is. Read. That thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. That you may regard discretion discretion and your lips keep knowledge the knowledge of god read for the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb uh -huh. and her mouth is smoother than oil you notice before it start off is giving you the tools to avoid the hole you see that he said if you got my knowledge in your mind in your brain in your soul in your spirit you'll avoid her you'll avoid the deep ditch you avoid the trap read but her but her end is bitter as wormwood her end is like poison the end result of you dealing with whores brother is poison it's death sister the end of you dealing with the whoremonger brother he got the earrings the car what the sister say i, I said in the other video she said he was handsome Wormwood, poison, that's the end result. Read on. Sharp as a two-edged sword. What is it? Sharp as a two-edged sword. Sharp as a two-edged sword. Read on. Her feet go down to death. Well, does the, the whore's feet lead you, single brother? 
Read. Her feet go where? Her feet go down to death. That whoremonger single sister. He's going to lead you where? Read that again. Her feet go down to death. Uh Uh-huh. Her steps take hold on hell. Did you see that? Did you hear that? Because you don't want to contain yourself. Because you said, oh, it's been so long. And, oh, eh. Contain yourself. Or feel the wrath of God. How do you avoid that? Keep wisdom in you. Bury your head in these scriptures. Get in the office. Stay busy. Pray fast. Study. And you won't end up in these situations. Poor. Poor. <laughs> hey, all jokes aside. Single brothers, single sisters, it ain't worth it. Hey, um, I want to go back to Proverbs 5 really quick because, to be honest, this is like one of my favorite chapters in the book of Proverbs on how to avoid whores, okay? Because it's, it's addressing young men specifically, okay? And when you read throughout the chapter, you can tell how it's dealing with young men because young men typically, they want to get their rocks off. It's a it's a youthful lust. It's a youthful thing. But when you get a little bit more older in age, you know, all of that stuff kind of dwindled down. Not that you don't want it, but you kind of calm down a little bit, right? Your testosterone level come down a little bit. But watch this. Um, read verse 3 one more time. It's something I wanted to bring out. Read verse 3. Proverbs 5 and 3. The book of Proverbs chapter 5, verse 3. Come on. For the lips of a strange woman. This strange woman, it could be a heathen woman, but it could also be a sister that's of our people, but she's a whore. She's not a woman that you're dealing with in a righteous manner. You're not proving this sister. You never got to prove or to prove this sister. Or this is somebody that you're dealing with in the world, right? So this is a strange woman. It says the lips of a strange woman or the talk of a strange woman. Come on. Drop as in honeycomb. Honeycombs are sweet. Honeycombs is smooth, it's slick, right? So she got game. She telling you all the good things. She probably calling you daddy, right? She she texting you on your phone like, hey, sexy, what you doing? Big head, flirting, all of that, right? It's smooth as a honeycomb. Oh, bro, she feeling me. You know what I'm saying? That's how it be. It always start out good. Gassing you, gassing you up. Come on. And her mouth is smoother than oil. She got good game. Oh, I just wanted to text you good night. I didn't get a chance to to speak with you today. So I hope your day was great. All right. Good night. Big bug, a honey bug, whatever the case is. Right. But watch this. Read on verse four. But her end is bitter as wormwood. But over time, over time, when you continue to start dealing with this woman, because it always starts out good. Right. Sometimes you get brothers in the truth. They be young in the spirit and they come in and like, hey, man, you know, it's this one sister that I really like. You know what I'm saying? I'm really trying to convince her and bring her in. You know what I'm saying? I, she be listening oh, like that, man. but she don't really want to come to the school. And we, we hear them he, cases all the go, time. He going he to convert her. He going to convert He's her. He's going to teach her. Right. <laughs> Dead mission, bro. Dead mission. I'm going to show you because they always act like they always act like they're going to come just so they can get what they want. And you're going to follow through because <laughs> you want something too, right? But watch this. So it say, her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Jump down to uh, six. Verse six. Lest thou, sh- lest thou shouldest ponder the life, the path, the path of life. Come on. Her ways are movable. It says her ways are movable. So over time, when things start out real good, now they start to kind of get shaky a little bit. Y'all start to get into it, have these real small arguments. She be snapping and you don't know why. And then she calmed down like, oh, I was just having a bad day. And then it happened again and then again. I'm like, man, bro, I wonder why she tripping all of a sudden. Her ways are movable. She's super emotional. You can't control when she go left. She says she going right, but she go left. Then she apologizes. Then she, she all over the place, right? Watch this. Come on. That thou canst not know them. You don't know her. You'd be like, man, this woman crazy. What's wrong with her? Come on. Come on. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Read. Remove thy way far from her. Come on. And come not nigh the door of her house. Why? Because if you come near the door of her house, what you going to do? Sleep with her. You're going to get, you're going to sleep with the sister. Come on, then you're going to get vagina whip. It's going to say it, too. 
Watch. Come on. Lest thou give thine honor unto others, lest you have children with her. Come on. And thy years unto the cruel. To the what? The cruel. What? The cruel. You didn't know that she was really a cruel woman. Nigga, you ain't ish. You a band. You a B-A-N. You know what I'm saying? Mess around, get stuck with that. Right. Or she, maybe she get mad at you. Now she calling big homie from the block that she went to school with. That's a vice lord. And he still got a crush on her. Right? Or other from such and such. She cruel. So now that you had children with this woman, and she don't, she decided that she don't like you no more, watch what happens. How do you give your years to the cruel? Because if you got children with this woman, now you have to deal with her as a baby mama. Because now you got a co-parent with this sister. And that takes years as this child grow. Watch, it's going to say it. Come on. Let strangers be filled with thy wealth. Let's what? Strangers be filled with thy wealth. Who's the stranger? That strange woman. How did she get filled with your wealth? Child support. Come on. And thy labors be in the house of a stranger. Because that's not your wife. Your labors are supposed to stay within your house with your wife and your children. Now you gave your honor unto another that is not of your house. And she's a stranger, and now you got to pay child support. And you, you got to do that for the next 18 years. So now you gave 18 years of your life to a cruel woman. It's more than it started 18. out good. What is it, like 20 now? What is it? Hell no, he stuck with her for life. Because you got Oh, yeah, well, this body, right? Yeah. By, by the law. Right. He, he loose from her, so to speak, but he stuck with her forever. Right. Y'all, y'all brothers got to understand that it'll behoove you just based off what we read. Just wait on a righteous wife because you want to get your rocks off. Let's touch this video, though, real quick. So that was for our brothers. Let's go back to our sisters. This ain't finna be all we talking about the brothers. No, single brothers and the single sisters. Play that. It's real short, but let's play it. Are we going to let the sisters address this? Go ahead, sisters. So I'm really realizing that a lot of y'all do not know the difference between being hypersexual and being comfortable within your sexuality. Even if we look at the word hypersexual, we can see that something is wrong there. Doing something overly, hyper doing something is never a good thing. And I bet if you go to your school and talk to the girl who is known to be promiscuous, she has a story to tell you. These girls' stories usually range from being ignored at home, being assaulted, them going through a traumatic life experience, which made them feel like they had to do these things to be accepted and validated. But the girl who is known to be promiscuous always have a story, and nine times out of ten, they end up regretting it later on in life. Hypersexuality is a trauma response. There's a root somewhere. You cannot be hypersexual naturally. Now, if we're talking on the basis of being comfortable within your sexuality, it's for you, it's embodied, that's a whole different discussion. This sexuality feels good because it's for you, because it makes you happy. The thing that I found with hypersexuality is it does not make the person who is hypersexual happy. It only makes the person who is benefiting off of the person being hypersexual happy. Continuously call these girls empowered and liberated and confident when they're usually not trying to attain the opposite of it. These girls are usually traumatized. They're usually hurt. They have unresolved past traumas and they use their hypersexuality as a way to cope. And if you think that hypersexual behavior is empowering, is natural, is liberating, I want to know your thoughts on how you feel about 16-year-old girls coming on this app being provocative. So are these 16-year-old girls who are dancing on this app provocatively, are they empowered? Are they liberated? Are they confident? And if you say yes, I need to side-eye you. Because the truth is, that 16-year-old girl is not benefiting off of being hypersexual. She usually has more things going on, which is why she's coming on the internet doing what she's doing. The only person who is benefiting off of her being hypersexual and exploiting herself on the internet is the person who is liking her content and reposting her content. So let's stop sitting here making it seem like hypersexuality and being promiscuous is a natural thing. It can be good. It can be beneficial when it isn't. I have never heard a happy story come out of being promiscuous. Usually the woman who is promiscuous telling a story, she always ends up in tears or saying that I just hate that I did this and I regret it. And she ends up changing her ways. The ones who don't change their ways usually face lifelong consequences. Ouch. So I'm really... Ouch. 
Because they say, you know, they be like, oh, you're women bashing. Why are you always so? Let the sister say it. So, why I play that? Being promiscuous, that's the thing. That's what all these women rappers is talking about. Sexy Red, what she say? She looking for a hoochie daddy. She, come on, man. It's it's a multitude of, of whorish rappers. So my sisters, you being promiscuous, that's a detriment to you. Hosea 13 and 9. Some of them things the sister was saying, we know people have had things happen to them. But you can't make that your excuse to be a whore with a W. Read that. The book of Hosea, chapter 13, verse 9. Uh Uh-huh. O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself. What have we done as a people? Destroy thyself. We've destroyed ourselves. That hypersexuality, because... Though she's talking about the women on this video, it's brothers too. You got that whoremonger spirit. You want to jump on every woman you see, bro. You're going to destroy yourself in the end. Read. But in me is thine help. But in the most high is your help. A lot of us, because we go through certain things, we use outlets to try to cope with that. Some people use crack. Some people use alcohol. And some people use sex. Everybody don't always pick a fight, get drunk, and get high. Some people use sex. Somebody upset you, you go out here and you go be a whore. You go sleep with somebody because it make you feel good temporarily. But the Bible is telling you, brothers and sisters, you're destroying yourself. What's something that can happen from you being promiscuous? STDs. And unplanned children with somebody you don't even care about. You just met them. Give me First Peter 5 and 7. Because that's a problem. And we telling you here today, don't be using sex for your problems. Deal with your issues. Because after you, have, you go out here, have sex, be a whore, the problem's still going to be there. That's just like the brother who keep turning the bottle up. When your drunkenness wear off, your problem's still there. You got to face it. Read. It's Peter's chapter f- verse. Verse seven. Verse seven. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. So you supposed to cast all your cares upon the most high. If something is too much for you, send up prayers, put it in the most high hands. Don't try to find something else to try to cope with the problem. Because if you use in sex, that's going to destroy you in the end. Give me video four. It's for my brothers. And I want to say this. You got to repent of this behavior. Because it's, the class is titled Prelude to Adultery. If you've been in whoredom right now, when you're married, what's going to happen to you? That's going to turn into adultery. You didn't tame that spirit. Play. It's for our brothers. And a man found murdered in a room at a Las Vegas Strip resort. Tonight, the two women accused of killing him facing the judge now for the first time. Amy's News Now reporter Victoria Saha joining us live from Caesars. Where this happened with who the victim is and the women behind bars. Yeah, Brian and Denise, still so many questions today as to what led up to the shooting. But what we do know is that the man who was killed had invited the two women up to his room right before being shot. 20-year-old Erica Covington and Ariana Taylor both making their first appearance in court Wednesday, both with a somber look, much different from the mug shots that were taken of them just hours oh, after their arrest. They look totally different than the mug shots because the mug shots they had the makeup on. Why am I showing this? That brother lost his life. He thought he was going to go to the hotel room in Vegas and get it on. Those women had a different agenda. When they got up to the hotel room, they put the brother to death, shot him. This can happen to you single brothers, man, because you, you can't contain yourself and you got to get some booty. You got to find you a hole in the house. Thank you, IT. That was on time. You got to find you a hole in the house. 
But some hoes ain't finna let you beat the donies down. They gonna lure you to a room. Either a man gonna jump out, put you to death, or they gonna put you to death. It said them two killed him. The women. Give me Ciroc 9 and 3. We gotta stop playing out here. You know what the Bible say, brother, contain yourself. Or this can be your judgment. That brother thought he's finna get it on. And by the way, threesomes is against God. That's sin. That's in Leviticus 18. In case you got any thoughts about doing that. And three. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 9, verse 3. Meet not with an harlot. Why? Lest thou fall into her snare. Lest thou what? Fall into her snare. Lest you fall into her snares. They set a trap for him. Why did, why did I point out that they look totally different? Because when they brought them in on their mug shots, you saw them all dolled up. They had the eyelashes on, the, the umbrellas. Right. They had the makeup on, the little lipstick. They was looking nice. Hell wasn't all frizzy like that. It's frizzy because they, they spent the night in jail. They was done up when they came for him. And he fell into their snare, their trap. Jump down to verse 7. Because we got to read it. We got we to gotta read that one more time. Why did that happen to the brother? Verse 7, what did he do? Verse 7, look not round about thee in the streets of uh -huh. the city. Neither wander thou in the solitary places thereof. Officer just brought this out. That brother was wandering in the solitary places. You brothers who be wandering in places where you know holes is at, this can happen to you. You wandering around Vegas Strip for what? Or you dipping off somewhere in Chicago, downtown, where you ain't supposed to be at. You looking for trouble. They got a song called Looking for Trouble, and that's the trouble that you can find from there. Let's go to video five. Here's another example, because you might say, okay, you showing these women, what about the man? It's always a, a woman saying that. The woman can't take no correction, no accountability, nothing. Let's go to this next video. Oh, brothers love sports. We're going to go to a basketball player. Y'all probably know all his stats. Let's make sure we get that time stamp. This is real short. Go ahead. When, when, it, when you first got the information, did you ever say to yourself, it was that nasty bitch from Sacramento who did that? <laughs> Were you, I, 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 <laughs> was it, was it, no. you, you, you think like that, no yeah. question about it. But I think what happens is you definitely go back and you start thinking. But you, you, you can't trace it, you know, because remember that that can sit in your your system, the virus can sit in your system for a year, two years, three years. Hold on, really stop know. right there, stop right there. You hear Charlemagne make light of it. He say, man, you don't ever think, for those that don't know, which I doubt, because brothers love sports. You know who this is, this Magic Johnson. You probably know all his damn stats, but you don't know his background, what happened to him. For those that don't know, he caught HIV. Back when he was the big NBA star, so Charlemagne making light, he like, man, you don't think, you don't ever sit back like, man, it was that, that, that B word, Shaniqua. Got him. You know? Got him. Yeah, yeah. Got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. Listen to what Magic Johnson says. Take it back a little bit. He's asking him, do you even know who gave it to you? Just, just play. Just play. Listen to the response. Play it. It was like, when, when, it, when you first got the information, did you ever say to yourself, it was that nasty bitch from Sacramento who did that? Were you... I, I, <laughs> was it, was it, was it, no, you, you, you think like that, no yeah. question about it. But I think what happens is you definitely go back and you start thinking. But you, you, you can't trace it, you know? Stop! Because... Stop! Stop! Because... You're right, he did. He had a lot of women. Remember, it wasn't just him. Will Chamberlain. You got the bad... Brothers be rapping about, man, I'm getting women like Will Chamberlain. Bruh, y'all don't know. When them men was at their height, 
They was at hotel to hotel to hotel. So no, he don't know who gave him that. Why? That spirit of whoredom. He laughed at all. He can't, he don't know. He was dealing with that many women. And guess what? He was married. He was married during that time. For sake of time, I ain't going to go all the way to that, that cutoff point that I had of that. But his wife was pregnant with one of his sons while he was out there doing that. And he was talking about how he was, yep, how he was troubled in his mind because he didn't know if he gave his pregnant wife the disease or his son who was about to be born was going to have the disease. So y'all keep playing. Y'all keep playing. Because once you you in that spirit of whoredom, you just trying to smash something. You're not, you not thinking. And then when you catch something, you're trying to double back. Seven women later. Five women later. You don't know. It, it's too late. You, you out here laying pipe. And you don't know what, what, what these women got that you touching. Give me Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. Why is that important? You got to change that spirit, single brothers. You want a wife. You can't keep doing that. You can't keep acting like that. Or what? You're going to get a wife and you still going to be, you ain't going to be a whoremonger now. Now you're an adulterer. You got to change that. Proverbs 14 to 12. The book of Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Why we go there? As young men, and I know all my brothers can attest to this, we're taught when we come up that if we have a lot of women, we manly. But they don't tell you when you were a little boy, when you were a young man, this can be your end result. You taking pills all the way up until your 60s. But you was the man back then. Like I said, rappers rap about Will. Oh, Will had a thousand women. He said he slept with a thousand women. Even Charlemagne going to ask him what his body count was, trying to be funny. But that's the end result, disease and heartache. That was the way that we thought was right, but it led a lot of us to death. Give me Proverbs, not Proverbs, so Rock 19 and 2. We got to repent of that spirit. You want to be a husband, brother. You can't keep moving like that. Or what? You're going to be cheating on your damn wife. You got to tame that spirit. Sisters, you can't be talking about you want to lure and you still want to be a whore with a W. You got to stop that. Read, Sirach 19 and 2. The book of Ecclesiasticus or Sirach chapter 19, verse 2. Wine and women will make men of understanding to fall away. Read that again. Wine and women will make men of understanding to fall away. You notice those are the two things that always destroy a man. Liquor and women. Sometimes it's separate, but them two together, God is telling you they destroy men. And you looking at it. It's a video of Steven, um, Steven Jackson. He an ex-basketball player. He telling the young man, he like, bro, whatever y'all do, bro, Find you one woman and settle down. Why? Because he went through hell. Because he was young, basketball player, getting the women. But then he going through uh, divorces, baby mamas, this problem, that problem. You don't know the back end of that behavior. It looked good. They made paid in full. All these movies, drug dealer movies. He the man on the block. All the women love him. But we don't know how their life really ends. Until you experience that or you see an example. Finish up Sirach 19.2. And he that cleaveth to harlots will become impudent. It said the man that cleave to harlots, you love chasing holes. You love messing with the holes with a W. The Bible says you're going to become impudent. Some synonyms for impudent. Shameless, immodest. You're going to become shameless. That's what you're going to become from that. Oh, oh man, I got to have the holes. I got the holes. That don't make you a man. That destroys your life. Then you make all these children and you can't be in none of their lives. How is that manly? Let's move along. Video six. Let's go to video six. 
Oh no, whoa, we we gotta we gonna let it play. Cause this is for our brothers with the whoremonger spirit. Because it's a different dynamic out here now. It ain't just okay, the women with the diseases and you gotta duck and dodge that. This is something else that you might not dodge. Because the white man got witchcraft and wizardry, hormone medicine. Well, you might think, nah, I'll let the video play. I, I, I want you to watch it. You, you just got to have all the holes. Play, press play. Papi, ¿cómo te llamas tú? Jonier. Y amor, ¿cómo te llamas tú? Miguel. Pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it. Now you might say, bro, how you ain't see? All he thinking about is the holes. Why in your right mind would you even participate in some stupid Girl. contest? With oh, hey, come, come kiss her, come kiss this girl. I got my microphone. I'm running up on you with a microphone, and I got what appear to be a woman with a camera. Like, man, come on, she want to kiss you. You really finna come on. Simple, but yeah, what's the word we 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 used to say coming up? You thirsty? Why would you just randomly kiss a woman that you don't know? Cause you you he tongued her down, bro. Tongued the tongue him so down. White. Tongued him down because he's thirsty. He's thirsty. He gotta have some holes. <laughs> Let's finish it up. Like, Y'all probably like, hold on, hold on, pause. Y'all probably like, he can't see the shoulders. No, he can't. He can't. He can't because he's full of whoredom. Hey, that's horrible. <laughs> Press play. ¿Cómo te llamas tú? Miguel. Compa, Miguel. En la cara. Hey, compa, tienen que ser serio, man. Papi. A ver, tienes que ser serio. Tú me tienes que decirme tu nombre. Papi, pero yo te lo mostré. ¿Tú cómo me vas a decirme eso a mí? Okay, that's it. But, but why would something like that happen? Why? Let's get Ciroc 18, hey, verse 30. Hey, hey, uh, if he was on the, on the radio show, he'll be the uh, the goofy of the... Oh, yeah. He can still be goof ass. <laughs> it ain't too late. He can still be goof ass. But that, why, why does stuff like that happen? Because with that spirit of whoredom, you become blind. You blind. You, you, all you worrying about is getting your rocks off I just got to have a hoes. You might get what you think is another woman. This is the dynamic single brother. So rock 18 and 30. Because y'all probably like, why? What? How did he not see? He He's blinded by his lust. More than meets the eye. So rock 18 and 30. The book of Ecclesiasticus or Sirach, chapter 18, verse 30. Go not after thy lust, but refrain my, thyself from thine appetites. You cannot go after your lust. If you go after your lust, what is going to happen? The Bible's telling you to refrain, discipline yourself, deny yourself those lusts. Why? What's going to happen? This is step by step. Verse 31, what's going to happen if you don't? If thou givest thy soul to the, the desires that please her. That's why I said, yes, this brother just tongued down a transformer, right? But why did he do it? Because he's thirsty. Why would you even, if it was a woman, still, why would you just randomly, you ready to just jump and kiss a woman you don't even know? Why? Because you full of your lust. Read, if thou givest thy soul the desires that please her, she will make thee a laughing stock 
to thine enemies that maligned thee. Now he's a laughing stock. That's Brazil, by the way. Tribe of Asher. That's, well, you don't know where that's being broadcasted. You don't know if that's a TV show in Brazil. Now he's a laughing stock because he's going after his lust. If he was in his right mind, he would have, get the hell on somewhere. But no, I don't want to, what? But he blinded. Women, women, women. And single brothers, you think that can't happen to you. This is the dynamic of the world now. You get drunk, you in a club, act like it can't happen. Play it again for him. Ecclesiastes chapter 23, verse 17. Stay in Sirach, 23, verse 17. Ecclesiastes chapter 23, verse 17. Because you could get fool or that whoremonger spirit. We're going to let the scripture line it up. Read that. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. See, we talk about being a whoremonger, but we finna go a, a little more in depth with that real quick for single brothers. Read that again. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. Uh-huh. He will not leave off until he die. Read it again. All bread. It said, did it say some bread? All bread. So guess what? That spirit could take hold of you to the point, hey, it's some brothers, they willingly messing with them. It is what it is. I'm getting action. That's how the whole manga talk. You will be like these men. I can't remember. It was a, uh, he's an actor. All the sisters love him. This man was up here com complimenting a transformer on um, Breakfast Club. Wish I could have got the clip. Yep, Malik Yoba. How do you get the all bread? You might not want all bread right now, but you're going to get to that point. Why? Revelation chapter 224. Uh, the brother that uh, uh, from uh, the Cosby show. Remember, I forgot his name, but he 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 was he was on TV hugged up with a transformer. How you get I, that? I forgot the... Uh, what his name is, but when you said that with Malik Yoba, it had me thinking about it, man, because that's that all bread that's sweet to a whoremonger. Because nowadays, you know, these brothers they say, man, the hell with being with a woman. I want to be with a man that look like a woman. That's horrible. Cocaine's a hell of a drug. Hey, y'all, so that goes back to the scripture that you brought out early in Proverbs, where it say a whore is a deep ditch. Although we're speaking specifically about a whore, but whoredom is a deep ditch. There's depths of whoredom that you can fall into when you are a whoremonger because all bread is sweet to a whoremonger. So there's depths there. So then eventually you start looking at these trainees and these trainees be looking like women like, man, you know what? I don't think that look too bad right there. You know what I'm saying? In the world, they socially accepted in the world now. It's a deep ditch. How do you get there? Let's see. The Bible finna tell us how you get the. Remember, it said all bread. That might not be your mindset now, brother, single brother, but it can get there. In the world, they got gateway drugs. It's a drug you start doing, then you move to another drug, then another drug, then another drug. Revelation 2 24. The book of Revelations, chapter 2, verse 24. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Diatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan. The what? The depths of Satan. The what? The depths of Satan. There's levels to Satan. There's levels to evil. There is levels that that whoredom will take you to. That spirit of whoredom will take you to levels that you wouldn't even think that you would go. That's an example right there, brothers. So you got to tame that spirit. That's why you be seeing stuff. Brother ain't never tame that, that spirit. He get married. Wife find out he into some wild stuff because he never fixed that. So you got to repent of that spirit. God only honors marriage. What's something that'll help you, right? Get a... Uh, Second address, eight and four. What's something that'll help you? These things that you seen was warnings. 
You got to get rid of that whoredom spirit if you want to be married or it's going to lead to adultery. Second Edges 8, verse 4. The book of Second Edges, chapter 8, verse 4. So how you overcome that? How do you prevent yourself from ending up in them situations? What's something that's going to help? Read. So answered I and said, swallow, then down, oh, my soul, understanding, and devour wisdom. You got to have your head in this Bible. You got to be devouring the word of God. All them scriptures on what you deal with. If it's being a whoremonger, if it's being a whore, you need to get all the scriptures and drill them into your head. Let that be your daily meditation. And what else? Get Mark 9 and 29. Last scripture. Them some solutions for you. So, yeah, pray. But not only pray, you need to have the word in your mind. You need to bring... You need to brainwash your mind with the word of God so you don't fall into these things. Mark 9, 29. The book of St. Mark, chapter 9, verse 29. And he said unto them, this kind can... I'm sorry, not... Yeah, 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 yeah. This and, kind come out not by praying fast. Yep, yeah, read. And he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing but by faith. Prayer and fasting. Certain demons, you can only overcome them by prayer and fasting. And a lot of them sexual demons, you got to study, you got to pray, and you got to fast because those things is strong. If you're not putting no, no barricade, no force field around your, your brain, you're going to entertain them thoughts. And then you're going to fall into these things that we seen. So... That's going to conclude today's class. I pray that it was edifying for you. Single brother, single sister, stay in the spirit, stay strong. Wait on a righteous marriage. Don't run out here and jump on nobody. It's not worth it. Most high Christ bless. Officer Asa. Officer Yoganon. Officer Hosea. Officer Judah. Most high Christ bless. Shalom. Nation is men leading by example.